story a long time ago. I'd say probably around about 1979, um, my first and only canoeing trip I ever done. Um, we went to Bohega State Park, and we had gone there several times through uh, several weeks through the summertime with the family, going out there and camping and cooking out and canoeing, and not me, but one day my brothers and sisters and all thought, oh, it would be wonderful to have Mary go canoeing with us, and they all knew I didn't know how to swim. And so they all kept saying to me, oh, Mary, it's not deep, you know, it's, it's not deep at all, it's probably only comes up to your ankles, you know, we'll all be together, you know, and there's only maybe two or three spots, it's really deep. And so they convinced me to go, and I'm like, okay. So my husband and I and my daughter, my youngest daughter, Mindy, who was probably about four or five years old at that time, got in one canoe, and my brother Bobby was in a canoe with my mother, who was deaf, and uh, we were canoeing, and things were fine, you know, but we kept going over to the banks, and every time we go to the banks, they have these three drooping leaves and branches, and I've always been told that snakes hang out of those branches, and I, I am petrified of snakes, and so my husband, you know, we kept going to the, 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 deck, the dock, and, and I kept, you know, pulling, you know, the, the trees out of my hair and everything, you know, the, limb, the limbs, and I told him, I said, don't go over to the docks anymore, because snakes are up in these branches, and they'll fall down in the boat, and I'll, I'll tip the boat over, you know, I can't stand snakes, so... Sure enough, you know, we kept doing that about four or five times, you know, and I told him, I said, what is wrong with you? And he told me at that time he didn't know how to canoe. Well, ain't that something? You, know, you don't know how to swim, you're in a canoe with somebody that never experienced canoeing. So, we started going towards this bank again one more time, and I was pulling the branches away from me because I was afraid a snake was going to fall into the, the canoe, and I tipped the canoe. That was horrible. I, the canoe was on my head. Um, I didn't know how to swim, and don't you know that that was the deepest spot that I could have tipped over. I panicked. Uh, I wanted my baby, you know, because I, I didn't want to lose her. And you know, not that my husband would have took care of her, but I, the, the, the canoe was over on top of me, and, and I... Um, all I could see is beige, you know, the sunlight was coming in or through the canoe, and I was trying to lift it off of me, but the water was holding the canoe down, upside down, over my head, and I'm screaming, and I'm hollering for help, help, help anybody, and I'm pushing, and I'm pushing, and I finally get the canoe off of me, and I'm going, where's my baby, where's my baby, <laughs> and so here was my husband owner, and I'm going, give me my baby, like it wasn't his either, you know. And so he gives me my daughter, and, and but I can't feel nothing. Very, I feel nothing underneath me. And I had a life jacket on, but I guess because I panicked, I didn't let the life jacket do what it needed to do. And so my husband's trying to hold me and my two, me and my daughter up, and we had this branch that my foot was sitting on, and it was slimy, you know, and everything. And, and I was standing there, and I'm screaming, help us, help us. And I could look at my husband, and the water just going up, up to his nose, and I'm thinking, all three going to drown, you know, and he's a swimmer, and he knew how to swim, and he's panicking and helping me, and, and people were just canoeing by, going, hey, look at those people over there laughing and everything, and I think that they thought that it wasn't serious, but it really was, you know, because they were used to people acting like they were having problems, and then they'd go to help and find out that nothing was really wrong. Well, here come my brother with my mother on a canoe, and... My brother saw, and he knew that, you know, it was serious, and he jumps out of the canoe, and he comes flying over there to help me. He leaves my mom in the canoe by herself, who doesn't know how to swim either, and mom just starts canoeing. I mean, she's just like, I, I don't know what to do, you know, and everything and all, and thank God it didn't tip on her while he was trying to save us. And so my brother comes over, and he gets the people to come to help, you know, and they get us out of the water, and I'm standing there on the bank, and I'm just crying, and I'm just holding my daughter, and just thanking God that, you know, we didn't drown or die in it. And they're trying to convince me to come back into the canoe and go on back down the, the, the river, I guess it's called. And, and, and I'm going, no, no way, no way. And my brother's going, look, Mary, the water's way up to my ankle. I said, Bobby, that's my brother, no, 
I could not fill the bottom. I said, I'm going to go through those weeds back there, and I'm going back to the road, and I'm going back to the campground. I, I've had enough with canoeing, and I'm not going. And my husband says, Mary, if you go through those, can uh, okay, those weeds, what's going to happen there? There's snakes and everything there, too. You know, I said, well, I'll just run like I can run. You know, I'll just hike my legs up and just go, you know, and everything. And so by this time, they're all standing there going, come on, Mary. Look, get in the canoe. We'll walk it from one side to the other to where you can go on the other side of the bank. And the grass isn't so high, and that way you can walk back that way if you want. Well, that took a lot of convincing for me to get back in that canoe. Now, mind you, I felt so stupid. Here I am, I'm getting in this canoe, and everybody's got the water. I can see it's only up to their ankles. And don't you know, just from where I tipped it over to maybe a foot away, if I would have got over on that part of the land, I probably would have been fine. But I didn't know that. All I knew was I was in a deep hole. And um, I, I really feel that if I would have tipped over and it was just up to my ankles, I would have laughed and got back in and probably really would have enjoyed the canoe. But no, I tipped over in the deepest part. So they convinced me to get in. I get in, and now, mind you, you got to see this. Here I am with my daughter, and we're sitting in this canoe, and there's about three people on each side of this canoe. And they're walking it over to the other side because... I was not going to let anybody canoe me over to the other side. So they canoed me over to the other side, and I told them, I said, I'm, I'm going back to the campground. And I said, I'll walk back. I don't care how far it is. And you know, they're, they're all thinking I'm crazy. And I kept thinking, oh, my gosh, I probably ruined the trip for everybody. You know, my dad's probably going to yell at them all of them and tell them, you know, this is terrible, you know, and make it miserable for everybody. But I didn't care. I just knew my life is going to go away in the water like that. So, here's my daughter, Mindy, and I. We go walking up to this barbed wire fence, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to get over this fence? And there was a guy sitting there by his campsite. And he tells me, he says, oh, the, the, the electric's not on. Go ahead, you know, come through. And I, I came through and started walking with my daughter. And the guy said, um, hey, um, I saw what happened out there. You almost drowned, you know. Uh, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm going back to the campground. I said, I'm walking back. And he said, well, can I give you a ride? And I stood there for a minute, and I thought, well, I don't know. You know, I didn't know the guy. And I thought, well, what the heck? If he kills me, rapes me, whatever, I almost died out there. What's the difference? You know, I can go ahead and get a ride back to the campground. So I get in this car with this guy I don't even know, with my daughter. Takes us back to the campground, which probably was about maybe five miles away. We get back to the campground, I go and thanks and really appreciate the ride. And got back to the campground and I was wishing clothes. I thought, well, I'll do everybody's laundry, you know, to compensate for a miserable day for them, you know. So I wished everybody's clothes. When they all come back, I thought for sure they all would be making fun of me and, and going, Mary, I can't believe you didn't try it again, you know, and all. And I just thought, you know, i got to be ready for this hassle and, and harass them to me, you know. So they all came back a couple hours later, and it was quiet. Nobody said anything, you know, nobody joked about it. And I just thought, well, that's kind of strange, you know. And I just thank God that, you know, we come back safely. And so I never knew what happened afterwards when, when I almost drowned. And I, on the way home, my husband told me that my dad yelled at all of them and said, no more playing around, you know, and everything. Just canoe, straightforward, no plan, nothing. Just get down to the end of the, I don't know what they call it, the galley or golly or what. And that, I would imagine, made it miserable for them because they couldn't play around, horse around. And so they knew it was serious, and they knew when dad spoke that, mind what dad says and so and when they came back nobody joked and so when i got home i told my husband that's not ever going to work again and i didn't know how serious my husband thought it really was until i was talking with my mother-in-law 